French, it's Miss Bridgewater here, and it's my turn to do the assembly. Let's take a look at which French value we're going to be looking at this week. My assembly this week is all about the French value of creativity. Now, walking around school, I often hear people say that they're not creative. I can never paint as well as that. I'm just not creative enough. If I was more creative, I could learn to play the guitar. I won't be able to write a story like that. I'm just not creative enough and I have no ideas. Well, I even say this myself sometimes. I had some clay for Christmas. It's now May and I still haven't made anything. I've got all the tools, but I just don't know what to make. I'm not creative enough and I'm scared it's going to look a bit rubbish. So what exactly is creativity and where can I find some? Pause the video now and share some ideas on what it means to be creative. I've been having a look for a definition of creativity and the best one I found is that creativity is inventing, experimenting, growing, taking risks, breaking rules, making mistakes, but most of all, having fun. I want to share a story with you now. It's all about a little girl and her creativity. The Most Magnificent Thing by Ashley Spires This is a regular girl and her best friend in the whole wide world. They do all kinds of things together. They race, they eat, they explore, they relax. She makes things. He unmakes things. One day, the girl has a wonderful idea. She is going to make the most magnificent thing. She knows just how it will look. She knows just how it will work. All she has to do is make it. And she makes things all the time. Easy peasy. First, she hires an assistant. Next, they gather their supplies. They set up somewhere out of the way and get to work. The girl tinkers and hammers and measures, while her assistant pounces and growls and chews. When she is finished, she steps back to admire her work. She walks around one side. Her assistant examines the other side. It doesn't look right. Her assistant picks it up and gives it a shake. It doesn't feel right either. They are shocked to discover that the thing isn't magnificent. Or good. It isn't even kind of sort of okay. It is all wrong. The girl tosses it aside and gives it another go. She smooths and wrenches and fiddles. Her assistant circles and tugs and wags. When she is finished, she stands up and takes a long look at it. Her assistant gives it a nudge with his paw. The thing is still wrong. She decides to try again. The girl saws and glues and adjusts. She stands and examines and stares. She twists and tweaks and fastens. She fixes and straightens and studies. She tries all different ways to make it better. She makes it square. She makes it round. She gives it legs. She adds antennae. She makes it fuzzy. She makes it long, short, rough, smooth, big, small. One even smells of stinky cheese. But none of them are magnificent. Her hard work attracts a few admirers. But they don't understand. They can't see the magnificent thing that she has in her head. She gets mad. The angrier she gets, the faster she works. She smashes pieces into place. She jams parts together. She pummels the little bits in. Her hands feel too big to work and her brain is too full of all the not right things. If only the thing would just work! Crunch! The pain starts in her finger. It rushes up to her brain and she explodes! 
it is not her finest moment. I'm no good at this. I quit. Her assistant suggests a walk. It's not much help at first. But before long, she starts to feel different. Bit by bit, the mad gets pushed out of her head. As they stroll along, she comes across the first wrong thing she made. The bad feelings are about to start all over again. Then, she notices something surprising. There are some parts of the wrong things that are really quite right. The bolts on one, the shape of another, the wheel to seat ratio of the next. There are all sorts of parts that she likes. By the time she reaches the end of the trail, she finally knows how to make the thing magnificent. She gets to work. She works carefully and slowly, tinkering, hammering, twisting, fiddling, gluing, painting. Her assistant makes sure there are no distractions. This is the perfect thing to ward off bears. This will stop that leak. This one's all wet. The afternoon fades into evening. Finally, she finishes. She alerts her assistant. The pair take a good, long look. It leans a little to the left, and it's a bit heavier than expected. The colour could use a bit of work too, but it's just what she wanted. They climb aboard and take it for a spin. They are not disappointed. It really is the most magnificent thing. So what we've learnt is that everybody can be creative. You've just got to be brave, try new things, and most of all, enjoy yourself. So, now that we know how to be creative, I want us to practice using our creativity all together. So, for our creativity challenge, you're going to need a piece of paper, and you need to draw a circle on it. Like that. Pause the video now and do that. Now that you've got your circle, you can turn it into anything you like. Maybe you turn your circle into an animal, or it could be an object that you find around your house, or maybe you just fill it with a pretty pattern. Remember, to be creative, you've got to be brave, try new things, and not be afraid of being wrong. There's no right or wrong answer to this, so just have fun. Pause the video now, make your circle, and then we'll come back and see what you come up with. How did you get on with your creativity challenge? I turned my circle, into a globe. Let's see what some of the other teachers made. Mrs Curtis has changed her circle into an umbrella. And Mrs Price has made hers into a tree. Mr Philpotts has created a rubber duck in his circle. And Mr White has turned his circle into a pig. Mr Preston's been super creative with his circle. He's made an empty plate fork, knife and spoon. And finally, Mrs Evans has turned her circle into a snail. So now that we've learned what creativity is, I'm feeling brave enough to get creative and have a go at making some pottery. Let's see how I get on. So here they are. I've created my first two pots. They're certainly not perfect, but the most important thing is I had lots of fun along the way. And now for some reflection time. If you find something challenging this week and things aren't going your way, remember our story, take a short break, come back to it and remember to enjoy yourself. Take a few moments now to think how you are going to show creativity this week. final thing to share with you before I go. So next Thursday, which is the last day of a school before you break up for half term, it is going to be French's Spelling Bee. So this is the day when you get to come to school dressed in 
black and yellow to represent B, and to take part in lots of fun games and activities to celebrate French's love of spelling. As part of the Spelling Bee Day, you'll also have a chance to take part in your year band's very own Spelling Bee. If you put your name forward to take part, you'll get the chance to be crowned French's Spelling Bee Champion for your year band. I wonder if it'll be you. I wonder if we can think of some creative ways in which we can practice our spellings so that we're ready for Spelling Bee Day. You might want to create some pictures around your spelling words so you remember how to spell them and what the words mean. You might practice your spellings using rainbow writing or the pyramid method. Or you might create your very own spelling scribble. I wonder what other creative ways that you can come up with to practice your spellings. Good luck in the spelling bee everybody. I can't wait to see who is going to be crowned champion. Bye.